Egypt's military leaders say they will sacrifice their own blood to defend the country after President Mohamed Morsi refused to bow to their ultimatum that he find a solution to the unrest sweeping the country, setting the stage for a possible showdown. These are live pictures that you're seeing right now uh, from Cairo, from Tahrir Square, where uh, thousands upon thousands of protesters continue to uh, uh, make their presence known. Joining us now with more insight into all of this is Aziz Abu Sarah from the Center for World Religions, Diplomacy and Conflict Resolution at George Mason University. Good to see you again, thanks Good for coming to see in. You as well, thank you. Uh, you know, I, I guess my, I have a lot of questions. The first question is, how did we get here? I mean, because it was just a year ago, Morsi's elected, there's hope in the, uh, in the uh, air about what might come. He's the first democratically elected president. Uh, and now people are calling for his ouster. Yes, and this is not surprising at all because if we look at revolutions in general, historically, you don't have a stability that comes in just a year or two years later. Mm -hmm. It is actually quite often for a revolution to repeat itself in those countries. Reform is much more stable than a revolution, even though it's a lot more exciting to do revolutions. President Morsi and his brotherhood in general did not have any experience of how to govern. They were the most established group in Egypt, but they, they thought the idea democracy for them is if we win the elections, we run everything and nobody else is with us. Even though he won only by 51%, mm -hmm. he did very little to really bring the opposition with him and now he's suffering the consequences. Economy is doing much, much worse today than it was under him when he took over a year ago. Nobody has seen anything moving. Uh, politically speaking, the constitution that he did not try to get people to agree with him from the opposition on. Then even recently, as opposition was going harder and harder against him, he decided to shift governors in Egyptian cities and appoint people who are from his party. Mm -hmm. And that just upset a lot of people. He, he's dug in rather than uh, try to appease people and negotiate and that, and that kind of thing. The way the opposition describes it, he made the government a brotherhood government and he tried to take the system, the uh, judges and so on, and change them and make them all part of the brotherhood and it didn't work out for him. I know it is not about simply this, but I, uh, you know, I, I was hearing someone say that one of the things that you can look at simply is the price of bread, you know, and, and by that we mean the price of the ordinary staples that people need, and, and there was hope that, okay, there might be some control over this and it would come down. It's gone up, and, and people can't afford, you know, to, 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 to go about their business every day and feed their families. Yes, absolutely. The price of bread in general, again, in revolutions has been one of the indicators because it's a trigger. It's not normally the reason, but it's a trigger for people to say, okay, everything else is not going well and I can't even feed my own family. So as the price of bread going on, which is one of the main essential things in Egypt, the government actually substitutes some of the price for bread. They're trying to help people being able to buy it. As the price of bread keep going up, people are saying, okay, things are not going well. The healthcare is going very bad. The life is not moving on. Unemployment did not change actually. It's increasing. So what are you doing exactly? Mm -hmm. Well, today, there's a, the uh, military has issued pretty much an ultimatum. You need to respond by uh, 5 p.m. local time. That's 11 a.m. our time. What will happen after that period of time goes by? Uh, this, is, this is a big question. Not sure yet, and it depends on how Morsi is going to react even after the ultimatum. That what's believed is going to happen is that the military is going to say, okay, Morsi's out. We're going to create uh, a leadership council by the chief justice in Egypt, and he's going to be kind of the president with a team, possibly two people, uh, rework on the constitution because there's no agreement on the constitution, and take a year more or less in a transitional period until the country is ready for elections. Now, the problem with that, though, is will the Brotherhood accept that or not? And if they don't, Egypt today is very different than two years ago. There's a lot of weapons in the streets mainly from Libya, and so this could lead to a lot of violence, mm. unfortunately. And you say, you know, it's possible that Morsi's out, but how does that happen? I mean, do they physically remove him or...? That, yes, they can physically remove him because the military and the police, both in, ag both in agreement that he is, you know, his mm -hmm. time is up. Uh, but there's a lot of external powers are being involved from the Arab world who are trying to pressure both sides. The U.S. itself is involved. And uh, 
it's not an easy situation, and there is no good way this is going to end, unfortunately. And, and the U.S. is concerned and has, has expressed concern uh, about a coup, telling uh, the military essentially that, hey, we can't necessarily support that. Uh, 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 we've got a lot at stake here, too. We do, but when you have tens of millions of people go out in the streets, the military really doesn't have a choice. It's either going to side with mercy against millions of people or it's going to side against mercy. Now, they are trying to comfort the U.S. and saying, listen, we're not going to take over. we appointing the chief justice as the leader mm -hmm. we are. And that's how we know about this is they're trying to leak some information to make us not being afraid. But they also, life in Egypt is paralyzed at the moment. Mm -hmm. And they must do something about it. I'll, I'll give you just a quick example from my personal life. My sister is, uh, lives in Egypt. I, I have family there. And she needed to go to the hospital a couple of days ago for blood. Uh, she, she needed blood. And she couldn't get an ambulance to take her. Mm. The roads were completely closed. There was only one hospital that could help her in the whole Cairo. Mm. Mm. Life is not normal in mm. Cairo, and the military cannot watch that and do nothing about it. Wow. Okay. Uh, Aziz Abu Sarah, we thank you for coming in, as always, uh, from George Mason University. And we will uh, today will be a pivotal day. We'll see what happens. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. It is uh, 7:41 now. We'll be right back.